Hey, this is Doug from Foscale Models, and this is my buddy Montana and my other buddy Diesel. And we're going to show you how to make uh, cobblestone patches uh, in, in paved roads. Uh, we're going to pour some plaster, we're going to carve the cobblestones right into the plaster, and then we're going to weather them. So this is a newly uh, installed Hydrocal street. Uh, it's got a little crown to it, just like a real street. And what I want to do is uh, create some patches where uh, cobblestone's showing through. So the first thing we need to do is draw out our uh, patch that's going to be uh, missing from the street, a uh, patch of pavement. So you can make these kind of in a regular shape, just do it with a pencil. And then we're going to take our chisel knife. And what we need to do is scrape off uh, the top layer of asphalt, if it were an asphalt street, just to give it a little depression. Uh, you don't want to go too deep, because remember, you, if you're doing this in HO, um, we're talking about a layer that's probably two scale inches thick, which is almost, I don't want to say invisible, but it's not very uh, deep. But we want to give the impression that it is a little deep. So I'm gently going around my pencil line with this chisel blade. to create this depression. So you can almost see it in the camera there. Um, it'll look more obvious when we start scribing in our blocks. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm taking a scale ruler and you could uh, measure the spacing between the cobblestones, uh, but I'm gonna eye it. Now, of course, these are slightly bigger than a brick, so if you have a brick wall for reference, make sure they're slightly bigger. Uh, you can, of course, look up the actual size of a cobblestone, though I'm sure they vary, but they're probably eight by eight by 14 or 16 inches. Um, in HO scale, I'm basically drawing lines that are about a sixteenth inch uh, apart, maybe three thirty seconds. And I'm only scribing these lines within our little island shape that we've chiseled out. So now we're going to draw vertical lines. Now this is important that you don't just draw a grid. We are drawing these just as we would a brick wall so that each course of block is staggered to the next. So it takes a little care and a little bit of um, some, some good eyesight. If you need readers like I do, you'll be using them for sure to see these little lines. Now what I've done here is uh, put myself in a difficult situation. I wanted to start doing the blocks on this side. I really should have started here and worked my way over. So I'm going to reverse my ruler and go, go backwards, which isn't the worst thing, but it's not, I would have preferred to go across all at one, all at one time. So that's it. It's pretty quick to do a small patch. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is nick a couple of these blocks so they're not so perfect and flat. The other thing you might wanna do is you've got this patch where the pavement is broken. 
chances are it would continue to break. So I want to do a crack uh, across the, the road here. So I'm going to dig in with my knife a bit. And an important thing about cracks, you don't want to just do these curves. Uh, cracks are very irregular, so I'm kind of pivoting my blade as I go. Okay, so I've added another patch down the end of the street here. I've got my patch here and some cracks. So we need to color this now. And to do that, we want to make a distinction between the block and the pavement. Um, of course, this is usually a, a grayish black color. And for that, we're going to use uh, driftwood from Hunter Line as a wash to start. And then for the block, we want them a little bluish gray. So we're going to use blue gray. So we'll start with the block patch first. And I've got a small brush here. Once you put the wash in, you can really see your work stand out, finally. Okay. Driftwood. Again, this is just a first pass, first base. We're going to do some more weathering to this until we get it the way we want. So this is the first pass with the driftwood stain. And it's, it's nice, but it's a little too light for what I'm going for here. So I've got some alcohol and ink. Uh, this is just regular isopropyl alcohol mixed in with some drafting ink. And I don't really have a recipe for you, but uh, I just make the wash as I need it, darker or lighter, by adding more or less drops. And this is a better color for asphalt, as you can see. Um, and of course, the first coat was really soaked up by the hydrocal. So this is a second coat, it's kind of nice. So I really want to separate the block from the pavement. The color is getting a little lost uh, and I want to maintain a bluish gray. Uh, so I've got some dark, dark, uh, kind of a turquoise deep blue here with some black. And this is acrylic paint. I'm just going to make a little bit of a stain of my own with this. And if it doesn't work, um, we can always put more color on it, but this is kind of what I want. You see how that sort of separates itself from the pavement. And again, it seemed really too blue at first, but now that the hydrocal's drawn it in, you can sort of see. And then when the light's not shining on it, you can sort of see the difference there. So here's our blue. Just mix it with some water. You see if it's a little too blue there, you can dilute that with water and let it just soak it up. Now these two colors are two acrylic Vallejo paints. Uh, this is Azul Marina, that is from Vallejo. And this is just Vallejo Black. All I did was uh, 
dab them a little together, mix them with some water, and it gives us a nicer cobblestone blue color. So we can uh, define this a little more with some weathering powder. I've got some brown chalk here, and I'm getting most of it off the brush because uh, I want to go light first. And for the moment, I'm just going to work the edges a little bit to give a little shadow of the, the asphalt to the block itself. And you can work your way in. We don't want to cover the entire surface. We want a little bit of irregular color. Then I'm going to take some light gray just to tone down that dark brown. That sort of brings it to the same tone as the rest of the surface of the block. You can try a darker gray. And again, what we're trying to do is just separate this from the, the asphalt, but not by too much because both surfaces have been exposed to the, to the weather. They've been faded, they've been uh, rained on. Okay, so now what I want to do is get some dashed lines down the center of the road. Uh, I'm using this stencil, uh, which is a two-lane road. Uh, obviously, you can see this is a little narrower than my road, but I can still utilize the, the dashed part of the stencil. Uh, you can see this is the scale of a vehicle. This road is a little wider. We're going to do sidewalks here later, maybe, so that's fine. Uh, we just won't use these side lines for the road. Uh, what you do want to do is tape down the stencil. You could use some painter's tape or just some low-tack masking tape. And it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. You'll hold it down yourself when you start uh, applying some color. Now, you'll, you can't see it, but right about here, we get to the uh, cobblestone patch. I don't want to paint the cobblestone patch because I want the part that had the dash on it over the cobblestone to have disappeared. So just be careful if you do use the, the cobblestone. Uh, so I've got a kind of a junky brush, a stiff brush, and I'm not painting. I don't want to paint because if I paint, I'm going to get underneath the stencil. I'm just kind of stenciling or um, just dabbing and stabbing the paint into the stencil area. And I don't want full coverage because I want it a little faded. This isn't a new road. I'm just using white acrylic paint. Um, this happens to be chalkboard paint, um, which means it's paint that could be used to create a, a chalkboard surface. Uh, what's great about it is it's very flat, it's very matte, it's not shiny, which is just what we want. Again, I'm being careful as I get close to this um, cobblestone area and hopefully that worked and these stencils can be reused which is great and what I'll do when I get to here is I'll leapfrog and match this line to continue the road Now it's a little irregular, but that's okay. Uh, this is a little bleed here. I'm going to touch that up. So I'm just going to scrape off some of this paint. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least it won't look like it, it was something that bled under the stencil. Uh, so the next step here, I want to make some, um, basically some just some dirt streaks from vehicles going back and forth. And for that, I'll use some black. But again, I'm trying to get a lot off of it off the brush. So I'm basically going into the, wherever I think the center of my lane would be. Now that's as dark as I want it. If I want to get a little lighter, I can kind of push it around a bit and do the 
other lane here. And that's a lot of chalk there. I don't want to use all that, so just blow it away. Uh, there will be a sidewalk here, so that's what this mess is. That'll get covered up later. Uh, this is also going to get repaved a bit too, but uh, generally there will be trucks coming out of here. So what I want is to show some traffic by creating that same kind of streak line going to the dock. And in, in a di few different places where they would cross into this lane, that lane. I don't want to do too much. Um, that's usually where I get into trouble with this. I add too much and it gets heavy handed. So just step back, take a look at it. A little is probably enough. Okay, now I want to add some uh, oil stains to the street. So I'm going to use a few different things. Uh, straight out of the bottle, we can use Engine Oil by AK Interactive. Uh, it is exactly, or it looks exactly what it says it is. And then I've got a darker um, fresh mud here. And then this, this is light dust and deposits, which is just kind of a light brown, tan, earthy wash. And I'm going to dilute most of it with um, mineral spirits. Again, I'm just using small amounts. And generally, this is in the center of the road. And we're going to apply it randomly. If there's too much on your brush, tap it off because you don't want giant circles that would in scale be about three feet in diameter. Like even that one's too big. So it's almost like a Morse code kind of thing. You can kind of just let your hand shake through it. And take off the excess off your brush. Get some mineral spirits. And just kind of let it bleed. That makes a more natural puddle than just by your brush. And take some of this light dust deposit. This I can go a little bigger with because it's not an oil stain. It's just an overall weathering look and just blend it all in take some of the darker stuff These are all, these puddles are all too big, so I'm just going to blot, let them get a little washed out. And now this looks like a lot, like a big uh, toxic spill, but you can dilute all of it in a, with the mineral spirits and it'll just leave behind just enough of the pigment 